I actually did finance as my first degree out of uni and I hated it and told myself I'd never return to uni. And I went and traveled and I kind of stumbled upon cognitive behavioral therapy, which is what we do here. I just found it in a book. And um, yeah, it just had massive benefits for me personally and it kind of changed my path and led me back to studying psychology because what I learned from that, I wanted to help other people learn uh, as well. I think it's a really privileged job because you get people come in who very quickly share the most uh, you know, personal parts of their lives, you know, things they, they potentially haven't shared with uh, anyone else. And then, yeah, you can make big changes in, in people's lives. From my perspective, like helping people and I guess self-help similarly can be broken down into kind of three components. There's the first is clarifying the problem. Um, so, you know, some people might come into therapy and they know exactly what the problem is, like they're anxious in social situations, for example. But others, they just know there's like an unhappiness in their life and they can't quite pin it down to anything. So we might take more time with them to refine the problem over time and, and clarify it because it's important to have the problem clear in the first place. And then the second step you might say is selecting the appropriate solutions. So that might be, um, you know, mindfulness or thought challenging or exposure therapy, behavioral activation if, if someone's kind of low activity levels and, and depressed. So you want to choose the solution that best maps onto the problem that a person has. And then the third is implementing the, the solution. That's probably one that's a bit neglected because it's quite easy for the implementation just to be ignored. And whereas sometimes we have the solution down pat and the, the challenge is just implementing it.